Hi, this is a quick video tutorial on how to put infinite latch pads on main stage using an Akai or any other MIDI controller with drum pads that have the ability to go toggle instead of momentary. So first put a MIDI activity monitor onto your concert for your second keyboard or third depending on if you have a two keyboard setup. Uh, you can label it, I'll label mine latch pads so that we remember when we get into the editing. Very important, put it on channel two and the keyboard is on channel one so that they won't interrupt each other when you're playing. Then assuming that you have the drum pads already set up and assigned to your Akai, you want to put these on channel 2 as well to match the new keyboard that we put on in the MIDI activity monitor. Then in edit mode, we're going to go and we're going to create a instrument channel strip at the concert level. Uh, and this is going to be for our pad sound. For the sake of demonstration, I'll just use the one that I already have set up here. I have one for Omnisphere. It's a Peter James created sound called the Sentimental Pad. And then I layered in some whistlers. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, and then you'll put your EQs, your pitch shifts, or whatever you like. And obviously Valhalla Shimmer for the icing on the cake. Everybody knows that. <laughs> then you'll highlight your channel strip. And in the MIDI input, you're going to select Latch Pads for the keyboard. So that, that corresponds with the MIDI monitor that we put in there. Uh, you definitely would want to put this on a separate output uh, unless you're a master at mixing. It just really helps the front of house and also in your ears. Then you're going to go up to the MIDI effects tab and select chord trigger. And this is how we're going to make chords with the drum pads. So each note on the drum pad uh, will go to multi here. And that just means that you can set each one of these notes to make a new shape down below on the bottom keyboard. So you press learn and you're going to select your note. So your C. And that's the shape that I made for C. Uh, for D, that's the shape that I chose. Here's the one for E, and so forth. Once you have all those set, then you just hit the Learn button again, turn it off. So with the drum pads here, still at the concert level, we're going to attach them to latch pad, mini notes. And I'm going to go find G3 because that one's labeled G, and G3 is the note that I chose in chord trigger. I'm going to go to latch pads again for the next drum pad, and we're going to go to A3. And for B, uh, I went with B2, just because I did. And then for C, I'm going to go find the C3. And again, because that corresponds, C3, that corresponds with the ones that I chose in chord trigger. See, C3, there it is. All right, so now in perform mode, when you click down and hold down on that pad, it should play the chord that you chose. Let me get some of these effects out of here. Okay. So that's me holding down the mouse. And when I let go, pad goes away. So that's where the toggling comes in on your MIDI keyboard. I have my pads set to toggle so that when I touch them, they stay on and therefore tell the main stage pad to stay on. And I have the attack and decays on the pads to really fade in and out of each other pretty nicely. Uh, I created a fader over here to control the volume in case I need to. Obviously some shimmer, add some dynamic texture in there. And that's all preference, not critical. So here's me playing with it. So it's just sitting underneath really nicely. I'll add some more effects in here for demonstration. And 
can switch to another key real quickly, which is really helpful in a live setting at church or whatever you do with your band. And that's how you do infinite latch pads with an Akai or any other keyboard with Mainstage. Hope you enjoyed. Again, I think it's really important that you want to put it out of a separate output because it helps for the mixing process. All right, thanks a lot for watching.